circle of polarized plane waves. In the previous examples, we have assumed that the electric field is oriented in x direction. So, as long as the wave is propagating, in this case, the direction of the electric field would be in x direction. This is known as linear polarized wave. Similarly, if the wave is oriented in y direction, as long as it is propagating, it would be linear polarized in y direction. In general, if the wave is propagating in z direction, we can have x component and y component. If the phase shift between these two components is zero, so the resulting electric field in this case would be linear polarized wave with direction phi with respect to the x-axis such that the angle phi is determined as tan minus 1 the magnitude of the y component over the magnitude of the x component. If the amplitude of the x component and y component are equal such that E1 equals E2 equals E dot, in this case the angle phi it would be 45 degrees. So, in this case, the electric field it would be E naught multiplied by x direction plus y direction multiplied by E to the power minus j k naught z, which is the propagation function in z direction. And in this case, the angle phi is 45 degrees because E2 equals E1, 10 minus 1, 1 is 45 degrees. The question now is what will be the situation if there is a phase shift minus 90 degrees between the y component and the x component. In phase of representation, this phase shift it can be represented as minus j. So minus j is equivalent to a phase shift minus pi over 2. So assuming that we have x component and y component are equal in magnitude but the y component has a phase shift minus pi over 2 with respect to the x component so the electric field in this case would be E naught multiplied by x direction minus j y direction multiplied by the propagation function e to the power minus j k naught z to obtain the instantaneous electric field we would multiply this phase of field by e to the power j omega t and take the real part of this phase of field. So the instantaneous field as a function of z and t would be e naught cosine omega t minus k naught z in x direction cosine omega t minus k naught z minus pi over 2 which is the phase shift of the y component in y direction. Cosine x minus pi over 2 equals sine x. So this term can be replaced but sine omega t minus k naught z. Now assuming that z equals 0 and we are looking at the electric field as a function of time. So by putting z equals 0, the electric field would be E naught multiplied by x direction cosine omega t plus y direction sine omega t, which is effectively cosine omega t minus y over. So in this case, the direction of the electric field in the xy plane would be determined by the angle phi tan minus 1 the y component over the x component and the y component in this case it would be sine omega t and the x component would be cosine omega t so it would be tan minus 1 sine omega t over cosine omega t or in other words tan minus 1 tan omega t 
So the angle for of the direction of the polarization would be omega t. It means that the direction of the polarization is varying with time. It increasing with time. So at time zero, it would be zero. At another time, it would be by over two. And another time, it would be by and so on. So at the plane z equals zero, if we are looking at the electric field or the direction of the electric field, it would look like a rotating vector. This is a rotating vector because its amplitude in x and y component are equal, it would look like a circle. So we are going to say that this circular polarized plane wave. And according to the rotation, we say that the angle phi, which is coming from x to y, is increasing with time. And the wave in this case is propagating in this direction. So effectively, the direction of the rotation, like this, is as if we have our right hand and we are moving with our right hand toward the angle phi and our thumb is toward the direction of the propagation z so we are going to call this type of circular polarization as right hand circular polarization it rotate as a circle and rotate in the direction of our right hand such that our thumb is the direction of the propagation that's what we are seeing. Since the finger of the right hand point to the direction of the rotation of the electric field vector, when the sum point to the direction of propagation, this type of wave is referred as right hand circular polarization. And this is the electric field of the right hand circular polarization. To obtain uh, the corresponding magnetic field, we can say that the magnetic field H equal 1 over eta multiplied by the direction of propagation which is Z in our case cross the electric field so the electric field is E naught multiplied by X direction minus J Y direction multiplied by the propagation constant E to the power minus J K or Z Now by applying this cross product, z cross x, z cross x is y, and z cross y, z cross y is minus x. So by applying this cross product, it would be e naught over eta naught y plus g x multiplied by e to the power minus g k naught z. If we take j as a common factor, so it would be x minus j y. So it would be j e naught over eta naught x minus j y e to the power minus j k naught z. So once again, we can note that the magnetic field is also right hand circular polarized waves. So both the direction of the electric field and the magnetic field are rotating as a right hand circular polarization and we remember that the electric and magnetic field should be <coughs> perpendicular or normal to each other and both of them is normal to the direction of propagation what will be the situation if the phase shift of the y component is leading the x component by by over 2 instead of lagging so in this case the phase shift is positive y over 2 in the y component. In this case, it would be also right hand circular, polar, uh, sorry, circular polarization, but the direction of the rotation would be the opposite. So, in this case, if we are using our left hand to describe the direction of the rotation, we will find our thumb uh, is going toward the direction of provocation. So we are calling this type of wave is left hand circular polarization.
uh, effectively if the amplitude of the x component does not equal exactly the amplitude of the y component this will not be completely circular so it would be elliptical polarization and if the angle is not exactly pi over 2 or minus pi over 2 it will also elliptical polarization if the angle between the x and y component is zero would be linear polarization so these are the different cases for uh, the polarization of the plane wave propagation effectively you are interested in linear polarization and circular polarization and we can also prove that uh, the summation of right hand and left hand circular polarization would correspond to linear polarization if they have the same amplitude if they don't have the same amplitude it would correspond to elliptical polarization so effectively uh, circular polarization would be quite useful for solving uh, some problems especially when we are talking about uh, propagation in ferrite material because in ferrite material the left hand circular polarization have a propagation constant and the right hand circular polarization has another propagation constant so effectively if we are uh, interested in uh, plane wave incident infrared material we divide this incident plane wave into two equal circular polarization one right hand and one left hand and we will see the propagation of the left hand severity and the propagation of right hand severity and then after moving outside the ferrite material we are combining uh, the resulting left hand and right hand circular polarization we will see all this stuff when we are going to discuss the ferrite method okay all right